I did, I did want to open the show with um, something kind of important. And it was a question that was asked to me about how you know when a joke is a dad joke. And I just want to let you know, it's when the punchline is apparent. <laughs> Oh man, we gotta start out the right way. I am Justin Roby, I am the host of this awesome, awesome show. We have a really great show for you today because you guys chose the stuff that we're putting in the build today. And uh, surprise, surprise, you basically just wanted the best possible system. I thought people would think, hey, you know, maybe we should do like a budget build or maybe we should do a mid-range build, but you guys just went straight for the, the monetary throat when you basically, uh, you guys chose the parts for this. So I'm just gonna give the people what they want. We're gonna build a high-end build and here's what we're putting into it. So starting with the motherboard, putting in the absolute best of the best that Aorus has. This is the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master AMD Ryzen. This is a hefty beast of a uh, motherboard and absolutely a awesome, awesome deal at 359 bucks. We're using the new Fantex Eclipse P500A. They're high airflow, built on the P600S um, frame. Uh, really excited about this. Thank you for Fantex for sending this over. This is a great opportunity to show you guys uh, this brand new case. This is the replacement for the P400A. A little bit more expensive for the RGB one, but much better in terms of cable management and all the options that it comes with. It's also got a little bit more RGB flair. So pretty excited about this. We're gonna build in this for the first time. For graphic card, why not? We're using the ROG Strix GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. I mean, everybody loves this card. They're impossible to get now. But you know, why not? Like when you're gonna use a card and we're gonna build the best system, why not use the best of best for that? So throwing a 2080 Ti in there because that's what you guys wanted. Uh, for RAM, I mean, if you're gonna build the best of the best, then you're gonna use Dominator. So we're using the 3200 megahertz Dominator Platinum RGB RAM uh, is the kit that we're gonna use for that. So that should be uh, absolutely awesome. Uh, a little bit less expensive um, because it's 3200 megahertz. Uh, for M.2 drives, we got the Western Digital Black SN750. Um, this is 3,600, 3,400 megabits per second in terms of its read-write speed. Super, super fast, and that's why it's 309 bucks for two terabytes. The CPU, we're using the 3900 XT, uh, which is uh, AMD's latest offering. Only thing faster is the 3950. Um, this has a better, this is just made with better silicon, and it, it has a ha faster infinity fabric, uh, and clock speed's just a tad bit higher than the 3900X. If you're gonna use cooling and you're gonna use nice cooling, then why not go all out? And that's why we chose the Kraken Z63. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful AIO. Um, absolutely uh, love the way this looks. We've got the, the, you know, the good screen and all that sort of stuff. So if you're gonna do it right, you might as well do it all the way right. You know what I mean? And then of course, we're also gonna throw, make sure that we got the right power. So if we're gonna finish high end, why not use a Seasonic Focus? This is the PX750. It's platinum rated, um, so we're just we're just we're just making it as good as it's gonna do. We're just gonna make it as big as big as it can be. I mean, there's other things we could do, like throw a thousand watts, and I don't know, probably faster RAM. I've got, you know, it's funny in the other room. I've got some four thousand megahertz um, G Skill Triton Royal Z. I guess we could have thrown in here, but I don't want to go. I don't want to go too crazy. We'll leave that for the. We might as well shoot for. The, we'll shoot for the moon, not for Mars, right? We're not Elon right now at the, at the beginning here. So that's all the parts. Should be an incredible build. Should be a lot of fun. And then of course, you know, we're gonna make sure it looks good. So we're gonna throw some Asia horse cables in there just to keep it, just to keep it, you know, just to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna use it as a doorstop. And I'm just gonna take pictures of it every day so you guys can know what I'm doing with this awesome PC. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I would not do that. That would be the worst thing. Let us start with our beautiful motherboard and get this going. Um, okay, awesome. We're already, we're already, we're already in like Flynn getting our, uh... okay, there's our thing. We got everything. I don't think, I think all of the stuff is actually already in this. So I think we'll be good. We'll look here in a minute, um, but we should have all I need out of this. Okay. So we've got obviously a super heating, I mean, super cooling for our VRMs. Uh, probably 16, uh, 16 phase. Uh, we've got two eight pin EPS connectors, a crap ton of fans. You've got a digital display plus a reset switch plus you know uh, alternative power. Um, you've got a but you've got you've got phase stuff just for RAM. Um, you've got look at I mean like all in all you see one two three uh, four five six seven seven fan headers. Uh, you've got six SATA. You've got an integrated I/O plus uh, Wi-Fi. You've got Q Flash. Um, you know, all in all, this is just a super loaded, super loaded road. But let's go ahead and get our CPU in. 
So this is a new, this is new. This one, like, unlike the other one, this is from inventory, but we've never got to use this, so I'm pretty excited about it. What did I, I left my knife on the, I left my knife out there, didn't I? Let's go ahead and get it, get this opened up. Cr crack the seal on the 3900XT. Just so you know, it's not, not fake. There's our uh, official uh, certificate of authenticity, so you guys know that this is a real uh, 3900 XT. There's no way I could have photocopied this, just so you know. So there we go. And this is that, it's got that, that new CPU smell. So here's our 3900 XT. Oh, you can see that XT on there. Uh, remember, when you're trying to grab this thing, uh, you want to grab it from the sides, not from the top. Uh, don't lick the pins. Don't pet your hamster with the pins. Don't make a Zen garden with the pins. Don't use the pins to fend off a million little toy soldiers. So those are all things you should not do with this. Okay, so putting this in there, there's a little little uh, arrow. You want to line it with a little arrow right there and just drop it in nice and easily. There it goes, in like Flynn. Oh, there we go. All in and good to go. Let's get this put away so I don't cut myself. Okay, throwing in our cool and beautiful, love the way these look, the uh, Western Digital SN 750. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna just use this little tiny screw. Tiny screw! You like my tiny screw song? Tiny screw! Tiny screw! That's, that's, that's my tiny screw song. You guys love my tiny screw song. If you're gonna install all four DIMMs, make sure that you check your manual. Again, we are using a new RAM kit, so this is brand new. Oh no, it's not, it has been opened. Okay, cool. In certain cases, like uh, you have to worry about dual channel RAM. So if you're only gonna stick in two, check your motherboard, cause usually it has to go in A2 and B2. But I always like to let people know and be aware of that. So we're gonna take out our kit here. Let's just get this RAM in, RAM it in. Uh, and then again, you wanna line up the PCB with the slot in the RAM like that, and then click, just like that. Click! That's how you do it. It's got a, it has a satisfying click. I rammed it in. That's right, I ram it in. More RAM for the, more, more RAM. RAM! I'm gonna ram that RAM, that's right. I didn't break it, it's fine. Everything's fine. I love this RAM, it's just so thick. Triple C thick. Thick and awesome. There we go. RAM! Okay, RAM is in. M.2 is in. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is because I know we gotta prep for this, is we gotta make sure that we put in our, uh, our brackets for our AIO. So we're gonna put those in first before we put it inside the case. Now, if you are using a Z63 for the first time, this one does not have liquid, uh, does not have uh, paste on it, but that is because I have used this kit before. So it, that, is, that is unique to this one. That is not the normal case, so just as an FYI. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these off. This is just what you have to do to, uh, as well. Just wanna take these off. And it's really easy after this for NZXT installations, which I love. The last one that this was on was actually a Intel. We actually used this same Z63 in our first ever Intel build. Um, so this has a, actually hasn't been on a AMD build yet. Okay, so here we go, we got it up like that. Oh, smell of chemicals. Okay, so we got that. Now what we're gonna do is you have these things that say AM4 on them, just like this. Uh, they come with the uh, Z63. You're gonna open this up like that. And then all they do is these little, just screw into the already built brackets. So it's easy. So it's a lot easier than you don't have to put in your own back plate or anything like that. You just use the black the back plate already provided, and then you're good to go. There we go. And there it is. The motherboard is now prepped for the AIO when we get to the AIO installation later on. So I'm trying to show you as close to what you would have to go through with retail, but given that I'm using parts that are that I've used before, I was try I, I try to plug that like I try I repack everything. Like this is a repacked. Like check this out, this is actually a repacked. I repack it just like you would repack it for retail. So I try very hard, so no matter what, even if I reuse something and do this stuff, you guys are still getting as close to retail experience as humanly possible when I show this stuff out, when I do this stuff, so. I try to be a service, and you guys don't care. You guys just laugh at me. That's what you do. You put exclamation point 69 in the chat, and you, all you think is you're just being funny. Um, this is the other thing too that you get with a $300 uh, motherboard is a complete, look at that, 
It's like shielded on the back. Look at that. So motherboard is completely ready. Let's go ahead and take a look at our case because that's the net, that's the new thing, guys. It's a new case. Okay, here we go, guys. It's the Fantex P500A. You can see that this is like brand, brand new. We don't even have like, we haven't even done the peel yet. So we're gonna go ahead and start stripping this down and we'll walk through the case real quick. These have the Vulcan doors, uh, which is cool, just like the P600S. So all you gotta do to take these off is you just open them up. Oh man, that is nice. Kind of slipping them off is really easy. Oh wow, look at that, that's nicer. So they've, they've, they've even made that a little nicer than what we had with the, uh, the P600 before. Those were always a little bit difficult. Now, uh, the other thing too is that unlike the P600S, you actually get your accessories box and it's Velcroed in, which is cool. So, um, so there we go. Oh, look at that. And so like, there's your box. We'll look it through the box here in a minute. Um, but that's neat that they just Velcro, they give you a really huge Velcro slip to basically as they put all the stuff in. That's pretty rad. If you know the Fantex P600S, this has almost the, the entire same layout. The things that are upgraded from the P400S versus the P600S, is um, uh, the P500A is we get this awesome thing right here, which is gonna make our GPU look a whole lot better. The front is now completely meshed, which means you have all of that awesome airflow in the front. Look at the side. I mean, the side of this thing is like very open and spacious, super high quality in terms of its stuff. This actually right here is an RGB strip. So you can, this, this is actually, uh, this will actually light up like the Evolve X. And then again, you've got three, uh, this one is the RGB version. So it's got three RGB 140 millimeter fans uh, in the front. We'll throw a 140 millimeter fan in the back. Um, and again, I don't know, I'm curious. Oh yeah, so check it out. So this is, again, the other thing that's super cool about this as well, checking out this, no mesh. This is just mesh, no dust filter. So in other words, you are not, you are not getting air filtered twice, which means we're gonna have super good airflow um, from there. You also have RGB up here, um, which is cool. Um, and then easy access for fans. And then it's also got that cool uh, top that you can just take off, so you'll get access to, to installing your radiator. So in the back, you should be able to, I think this just, this is the only thing that's different, it looks like is, no, you cannot, so the other thing that is different from the P600S is that unlike the P600S where you could take the top off to do all of the radiator stuff, um, you do not take that off now. You just have a simple mesh that you can unscrew and then there's your access to your, here's your access to all of your, um, your radiator installation, stuff like that. With the P500A, all we have to do is you just have the single, the single mesh that's held by magnets and then now here's all your access. And again, you have up to 280 millimeter rad on the top. Um, you've got 360 or 420 actually in the front in terms of your radiator support. So you can do two, up to 280 up here, up to 420 back here. You've got 120 millimeter in the back. Um, and then uh, you also, this is also vertically mounting in terms of your GPU. This does not need any additional stuff for vertical mounting GPU. I don't know what that means, um, but this doesn't, unlike the Intu Pro 2, this one does, you do not have to do anything additional. Now in the back, which is also the other cool part, because I wanna make sure we show this off because this is a new case. Um, the other thing in the back is you have all of these channels, just like the P600S for, um, it's actually a little bit more indented. So you have lots of channel room for cable management. You've got the uh, three trays for SSD installs um, that are just easily removable. You just basically lift them up like so and take them off, which is cool. Um, and then uh, you can also, you also probably, and we'll look in the box here in a minute, has some additional uh, drive trays in here because you've got the lockable drive trays that always comes with it. So great case, especially for the price. Absolutely love the P600S. And I think this is like a budget version of the P600S with better airflow. So yeah. Quick, here's the stuff that comes in the accessory kit uh, for the P500A. So it, this is smaller than the one, the P600S. So um, you get your instructions, which uh, you do. Okay, so here it is right here. It comes with riser cable screws. So you do there. You do need to get this optional upgrade, which I don't have. If you wanted to do a vertically mounted GPU, I do want to get that at some point in time because I think vertically mounting in this is cool. The other thing too is that this system is also capable of is actually dual, a uh, dual install, a dual PC install. So you can have a mini ITX bracket at the top and actually have a streaming PC and a gaming PC installed in the same PC at the same time. So, which is actually pretty rad. And then the way they show right here is that you can actually see you remove these top two screws and then you put in this bracket and you can actually have a second system if you use their Revolt X, um, their Revolt X power system. So pretty cool. 
Um, and then what else we get? We get less drive trays than what we've gotten with the P600S. So with the P600S, you used to get um, you used to get four. You only get two with the P500A. Um, and then it looks like you got a support bracket, a GPU sag bracket. And then here is my also my always my favorite part. There is your Fantex. Uh, they always give you a, a, a screw separator, which is also pretty awesome. So stoked about that. That's what I needed to get out of there. Um, we're not going to be putting any drives, but you have those in case you want them. So. Um, Already, I'm always I'm just a huge fan of Fantex, how they include how they package their stuff, um, just a lot of attention to detail, and so I've been excited to get to um, actually use this system and build in this. So this should be a this should be a relatively easy build, <clears throat> just because of <clears throat> how easy Fantex is to build in. So I'll put this right here, and this right here, and let's keep going. Okay, let's grab our let's grab our case here. Okay, so here we go. Gah. Hefty board, guys. Hefty, hefty board. And easy to just kind of line up like so. And again, there's a little peg in the center that gets us in there. But there we go. And then the cool thing about Fantex is just how easy it is to find our screws here. So we're actually already good here from that. Yeah, mesh does kick butt. And honestly, uh, I'm, I'm excited because a lot of the mesh cases, um, like I've been really happy because Fractal's been kind of the king now for a while, um, and it's cool to see that um, now with the release of the TD500 from um, from Cooler Master, and now the P500A from Fantex, to see some better, almost higher end mesh cases starting to show up, which means I think we're in for a nice treat, just uh, almost a case renaissance, you might say. And who doesn't like to say case renaissance? The other one that I'm really excited about and is on the way is the Land Cool 2 mesh as well. So I have that on the way as well. So we'll do a build in that. Um, and then we're going to be building, I'm replacing my, I'm redoing my entire game room. So it's actually being painted next week. We'll have videos for that coming out. Um, but we're gonna be building a new system in a Fantex that is going to replace my old gaming streaming rig stuff. So that should be exciting too. I may just not screw in these other two just because again, the system isn't gonna stay together. So a little bit faster than normal. So we got our screws in, our motherboard's installed. Yes, there are screws I did not install. Uh, for the sake of brevity, we're just being faster. Look at how, the other thing too, the one thing that I, I, I will also give props to, look at how much room you have up here. Like this, like there is gonna be no issue in terms of doing cables and being able to get your hands in here. You have a good, What what is that? That's, I wish I had my ruler. I mean, we have a good probably four inches of room up here to um, to be able to put in an AIO without any issue whatsoever. That is, that in and of itself is awesome. So huge shout out on that one. That's huge. That's cool. All right, let's go ahead and get our AIO installed. Okay, so we're gonna get our radiator now, our AIO ready. And this is a 280 millimeter. Okay, so there's all our cables. And then we're getting out all our stuff. There's our fans. There's our brackets if we were gonna do um, NVIDIA, or sorry, uh, Intel. Let me this out, and I think, yeah, I did. I had one screw. I've used this one quite a few times, and I just I, I just love the way it looks and the way it performs. So, um, and you, that screen, I mean, you just really can't go wrong with that beautiful screen. So, you know, there's little, there's little, there's little, um, there's little I can complain about. Okay, there's all our screws. So for this, we're gonna do it like this, which means our fans are gonna go on like, so our fans are gonna go on like this, which means they go forward like that, okay. Cool. There's no liquid, there's no, people are asking, I am gonna be putting liquid, I should have put it on there already, I did not, I should have put, um, thermal paste on there, but given that I just forgot. Okay, so there's our fans. Again, we're not gonna do a lot of RGB for the sake of just because that takes a lot of time. So the RGB, the only RGB we're gonna have is the RGB that comes off of the motherboard and on the case. Okay, just screwing this in.
Okay, now we're ready to install our AIO, guys. Who's ready for an AIO install? I am, I'm like so excited. I'm so excited about an AIO install. Awesome, let's do it. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is mount it. Let's mount our AIO, get it in there. There's so much room at the top for this. There we go. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our thermal paste painting. Everybody's favorite thing, thermal paste painting. This will be the last of my Cremique. There we go. Actually used all of the Cremique. Luckily, I have more coming from them right now. So. Okay, we're gonna, tell, we're gonna paint our thermal paste on. And like I said, if you normally were buying this and it was just out of the box, you would not need to do this. But given that this is a, I've used this AIO and I've since cleaned off all of the stuff for it. We're good. I had to put thermal paste on. The main reason I put thermal paste on is again, this does not have a this, I, this is a used AIO. I've used this AIO before, so it's been since clean. So you can see my thermal paste covering right there. So I, got, I was just getting the thermal paste installed. So it's all nice and even. I was using, so you guys wanna know what paste I was using. I am using the uh, Cremique uh, 2.0. This is a ceramic, uh, trilinear ceramic thermal compound. So big fan of this stuff. Um, and that's what I've done. That's what I'm using, so. Yeah, so that is why. Uh, so just so you know, because you're probably you're like, wait a minute, they're pre-installed. This one does not have pre-installed thermal paste because I have used it before. We're just installing this. We just installed our uh, installed our USB, and then what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna install our uh, other one real quick, just making sure it's in. There we go. Okay, so now our cable our cables are installed. And the next step is making sure that. Everything is ready to go. So this is what the AM4 bracket looks like. So you wanna to switch to your other bracket. And we're gonna make sure that's correct. There we go. And now everything will work the way it's supposed to. And now, and just like that, there we go. There we go. We'll put in our other down here. And then what we do need is we need our little CPU cable. Make sure our CPU. So I plug this, just so you guys know, um, I always plug this cable into the CPU header, um, which is, I'll show you right here. Uh, the CPU header, not into the pump header. Main reason being is the pump fails, it still throws an error and it'll keep the PC from booting if it's on the, the pump header um, and you don't set that to monitor by default, then you will not get that same warning. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run these two, these cables, real quick. A little side, real quick. And what we're doing is we're just gonna run our cables. And there is enough room, I think. Now we have this one. Okay, those are zip tied now, so I can finish my cable management in the front. <sighs> okay, so when we're doing this, uh, HD audio is gonna go right here. So there's our HD audio. This right here is our USB 3.2. So we're gonna put that right there. We'll take care of these here in a minute. These are all top panel stuff. Here's our front panel connector. This is our power switch. So that looks like there's one power, there's one front panel connector. And then this is RGB. Oh, RGB goes far left over here. Okay, USB-C is in the middle. It usually is, so it's always in the middle area. So we're gonna unwire this. Then push this out right here, and USB-C is gonna go right there. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do real quick before we turn this over is go ahead and connect all of our fans up here. I am actually gonna go ahead and pick up, uh, cook up our rear exhaust fan. This actually supports three. Oh, this USB is super short. Okay, so USB is gonna have to go down here, which is unfortunate. We'll run it right here through the middle. It's pretty short. Um, and then we can connect all of our fan headers 
including our, our, our one in the back to our, our AIO, which is fine. Okay. So that kind of keeps everything cleaned up right here and out of the way, which always makes me happy. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab these three fan headers, plug in our three fans for the front because they're right here. Okay, all of our fan headers are hooked up. There we go. Now, next up, we got our USB-C. For USB-C, all we're gonna do is we're just basically gonna use this, and it's gonna go straight in at a 90 degree angle. If it has problems, you may just need to twist it around because it only goes in really one way. Single front panel connector, which is just our power switch. So that's gonna be two over from the left. For USB 3.2 or USB 3.0, uh, there's a little nipple, everybody loves that I say nipple, and there's a little nipple on the top here. It's gonna basically go straight down in a 90 degree angle. This is our USB for our AIO. Um, it is only keyed a certain way, so there's a there's a little pin right there that you can't, like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you, there's a little pin. We have our addressable RGB right here. And addressable RGB, there's an addressable RGB header right there. Pretty simple, just match up the pins. Just to kind of recap real quick so you guys can see all the front panel connectors. This is your HD audio right here. That's your RGB. USB, this is for your AIO. USB 3, that's for your front panel connector. This is your, for your, sorry, your, your top front panel connections. This is your power switch. USB-C right here. And then our three fan headers. So that would be, that's all your connections right there. Okay, GPU time. Okay, here we go. We're gonna open this up and get our GPU out. There it is right there, ready to be unleashed. We're gonna do this right here. And this right here. And then we're gonna grab our GPU. Oh, that looks good in there. That looks really good in there. There we go. There we go, screwed with confidence. I like, I like the way this looks. I love these cables. They're cool cables. There we go. Okay. Flip this over on the side. There we go. Okay, we're gonna put these last ones in and then we're done. Last one. There we go. That's pretty much the front of this PC is done. We just gotta put in the PSU and turn it on. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start running our cables again. Put that underneath this. There we go, okay, there we go, there we go. Clean-ish, not my, not my best work, but clean-ish. Let us go ahead and get our PSU in, and then we can turn it on, guys. Okay, what cables do we need out of here? There we go, we need that. We need that, that's your graphics, your CPU. We need one of those. We don't need anything else from here. We'll need a SATA, which is right here. That's all the cables we need. This is it, this is the PC you decided on. It's coming to fruition. Don't say I don't keep my promises. CPU, we're gonna plug that in. Awesome. There we go. Now we can pull this through. Now, for the last little bit, this is our CPU. So that's gonna go up and around. There we go, okay. There we go, sat in. Okay, there we go. The last cable. It's like the last Starfighter, but a cable. Okay, everything is in. Okay guys, build is finished. Yeah. I like telling dad jokes. Sometimes he laughs. I was good. I was going to tell you guys a time traveling joke, but you guys, you guys didn't like it. <laughs> okay, guys, it's all on. Turn on the lights. Oh, I see lights. This is going to work. Boom. And it's on. I hope it works. There's the capture and it's saying right there. There's the capture of the post. Let's uh, push this off to the side. You can see a little bit of that, get a little bit more of like a three quarter view there. There we go. 
We'll get the the Asus stuff going in there. Ooh, I love the the Ram looks really good. We're, we should change this all to blue. Do blue, white, blue, white, and all that sort of stuff. But um, for the most part, like fan looks good. The motherboard looks good. Like all this stuff looks really good. Um, happy, very happy with this build. Okay, well, we're gonna let this finish up. Um, it's just doing a cumulative update. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.